Yeah. Maybe we just yeah. hold on, gotta get rid of these. The demons is gonna get spicy today. <laughs> <laughs> got these ghosts of the '80s up in here. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Let's get this show cracking up. <laughs> Empty, huh? Mm-hmm. Empty? Look, with the honor call for great. Feel my man drink up. The genius who do what they do. Who possess the nets of less with desire is true. Welcome back to another Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Woof, woof! <laughs> Joined by the legend himself, Gilbert Arenas. We also got Brandy Jennings in the building. What up, what up? Ladies and what gentlemen, up, what it's up. the last day of Black History Month. So I need all the white people on the staff. Y'all owe us 10 push ups for reparations. <laughs> If you're not white, not black, give us three. <laughs> Just three. Fingertips, though. Fingertips. <laughs> right, we got a lot to get into. We got one started. <laughs> hey, he's going, he's going. <laughs> give us that 10. <laughs> 10 for Obama. Two. <laughs> two, two. We are dedicated on this show, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We got a lot to get into with the current, but before we get that, we got we to hit the pass, Gil. So it's time for a new segment. We're dropping mm-hmm. called What's Eating Gilbert Arena? Okay. It's like Gilbert Grape, but Gil's Arena. Mm-hmm. So the internet's been ablaze, you know, after your controversial opinions on the growth of the NBA. Now you said, and I quote, 80s cannot compete with 90s, 2000s, and now. Right. It is a pointless argument. Bill Lambeer, I don't know why he caught the slander, but I do get it because it was February. <laughs> Bill Lambeer cannot play basketball today. His defense does not work today. Does that work? So a lot of people got in their feelings, took it personal. I don't think none more than Chris Broussard and Rob Parker. Two gentlemen I respect, hosted the Odd Couple Pod on Fox Sports. And they were in their feelings. Did you hear what they said, Gil? Yeah, I heard it. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. You heard all of it? Yeah, I got it uh, translated for some, me. Some transcriptions and all that yeah, good I had stuff. It translated for me a little bit. So, wh- what's your response to them saying that, that you don't understand basketball? Understand the game, I believe is what they said. You know what's so funny? That's the same complaint we have about them that they don't understand the game because they've never played it. Um, <clears throat> Well, my knowledge for the game, um, I was actually being nice, right, by calling them drunks. I was being nice, but if we want to see my knowledge of the game, when it merged in, uh, what, 76, (laughs) the NBA had a really big problem with the booger sugar from the NBA, (laughs) right? I I, I was trying to spare, but, you know, since we want to talk about it, 70s, 80s basketball, the league was having it really bad image problem with the Tony Montana. That, that's what inspired the movie Scarface because all the NBA players are just <laughs> coked out. Like, I don't even know why we even playing this game. The whole 70s and 80s NBA like league was just on drugs. It was just on drugs. Like it performing was performing though. I would say huh? they were performing. They should have. They was on that hard rock candy. That cocaine right up and down. Like I don't I don't understand what we're what, what what we're talking about here. Because whenever they make an argument or try to make a point, they use the same six players. The same six players to make arguments. Okay, we're gonna take those six, we're gonna move them. How about the other fucking four hundred and fifty yeah. players that played in the eighty? You know the, the you know the Knicks teams where uh, they were throwing games for that drug. The Philly scenes where they were throwing games for the drug. That's the type of league that it was. They were literally throwing games for drug habits. Wow. And you're telling me that's the, that's, that's the era that's supposed to be this golden shit? It's, it's only golden because it was the merge. Then you had uh, Magic and Bird being the face of the league at that point in time. And race wars going on. You know, you had every black person, Spanish person on the West Coast rooting for Magic Johnson and the Lakers because there was only fucking two TV channels. Either you're going to watch the Lakers or you're going to watch Boston. Boston. And then you had everybody over in Boston rooting for, for the legend. So what do you say? Because we're going to get into it a little bit. Normally we don't like to feed the trolls, but, you know, we were touched by it. We talked about it yesterday during our, our pre-production meeting. So... MJ and Akeem are part of the 80s generation. Cap. Cap Rooney? Cap? What kind of cap? Uh, okay, see, this is... <clears throat> so, so I can break it down. It's Chris, right? Chris Roussard. Which one called me? Willis. 
Uh, that was Rob Parker, I believe. He's stuck in the 80s, as you can see. Call him Willis. Yeah, that fucking, <laughs> fucking show was like mid-80s. Yeah. Different stroke, well, though. Well, you said it was mid-80s, right? You're fucking stuck out there. Um, so this is how it, it, it works. All right, so we'll use the 80s. So 1980 to 1984, those are your decade players, right? You don't want to be drafted in 85 or 84, 85 or 85, 86, right? Those were called tweeners. That's, that's your mm -hmm. tweener years. Anybody after that, you might as well look to the new decade because the fact that 77, 78, 79 players, they go through your first three years. So basically in the NBA, it's going to take you about three years before you can actually get into your groove, right? So those 70, those 70 late 70 players, they're going to be priming soon as the, the decade starts in the 80s. So they have 10 years of work they're going to do. You know, anybody 85, which is going to be Jordan, Hakeem, and Barkley, you have to come out the gates running, man. So even the great Jordan, he still don't make the first team decade averaging 36 and all that because he still only played five years. No. So he has five years worth of um, stats versus someone who played that decade for 10 years. So when you do the decade count, Jordan ranked eighth, Hakeem ranked tenth, Barkley didn't even rank in the top ten because of that, because he started off the first two years. So those mm. players after 84, 84 going on, they're not going to be all decade players. Oh, yeah. So they will be priming in the following year. That's why Jordan is considered a 90s player. Well, Jordan did win four of his five MVPs in the 90s. He did oh, win one in the 80s. He was a 90s player. Six finals MVPs came in the Nin 90s. 90s player. His only defensive player of the year, though, came the in the only two The only two people I've ever heard called him an 80s player was uh, Chris and what was his name? Rob Parker. Call me Willis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, are the only two, those are the only two people I've ever really heard him call, uh, call Michael Jordan an 80s player. So I guess the question, if you're saying the game has evolved, 80s can compete with 90s, 2000s, is 80s Jordan better than 90s Jordan? Really? See, that's, got that's, to ask. Give us but that's what you do. Host. Can the '80s Jordan beat the '90s Jordan? No. I'll can the that. '90s Jordan? I mean, can the '80s Hakeem beat the '90s Hakeem? No. 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 So what they try to do is then say, um, yeah, Hakeem Olajuwon was whooping on uh, Shaquille O'Neal. You mean Hakeem, the MVP the year before, beating on a third-year Shaq? That's just like Jokic, Embiid, Greek the Freak beating on Wiseman. Obviously, yeah. that that is fucking obviously. Like I mean, like you know what I mean? It's the, the arguments you're making don't even make sense. Like those guys are considered '90s players. Even in the '90s, Shaq was '92, '92, and he's third team. He's third team all decade in the '90s. He's first team in the 2000s. You know what I mean? So it's basically your following year where you come in. Um, but again, you know, you move those six players out. Tell us about the rest of those cocaine ass heads. <laughs> now, you know what I mean? Let's not forget. It was, <laughs> let's not forget what the eighties basketball yeah. was really about. Yeah. Like, let's really not like sugar coat. I shouldn't have said sugar. <laughs> I shouldn't have said sugar because it was all on that. You know what I mean? I, I, again, we, when you're talking about this knowledge, what, what are you basing this off of? Research or did you actually, I played, do you play basketball? I played. Were you all NBA level player again? I was three time all NBA. You did that three times. So, you know, when we're sitting, gotta remember, I'm I'm 92. I'm in you know what? I got my cell phone. What two what, 0102? That was 2001. So I'm at the prime, I'm at the beginning of the era. Now, so you know, if nobody knows this, I'm gonna give you a list of the top 24 players in the 2000 decade. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. The best 2000. Listen to these names. Let me know if you hear any name that came in 2004, 2005. LeBron, Kobe, Shaq, Dirk, Dwayne, Steve Nash, Allen Iverson, Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, Ray Allen, Chris Webber, Paul Pierce, Chauncey Billups, Yao Ming, Baron Davis, Carmelo, Tony Parker, uh, Paul Gasol. Those. That's my era. It's hard for, you know, certain players. So the youngest player is what? Uh, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. Yeah, you know, they came, one, in one, they came in what that they came in what 2002, 2003. Yeah. You know what I mean? So 
it's hard for anybody after that to make the team because you're you're losing to the the the, the, the mid '90s players that's priming right now. So that's what that's what that's, that's what the Chris is in. What's his name again? Rob Parker. Rob Parker. You know, the, like guys, like people like him who just watch games. They don't really understand it. So people that are like players that are in the tweening years, you can just be stuck. You can be. You can have a great career and not make your decade team because you came in at the wrong era. So that's why Jordan is not considered an 80s player. He's considered a 90s player because when he came into the 90s, him, Barkley, and those are the same people he used. Mm. He used the tweening player. He was better off just saying Magic Johnson and Bird. But you know, that was it. That was the whole era, Magic Johnson and Bird. If you do the shoot, this is how you can tell. Shooting guards, right? Since we're not using Michael Jordan in the 80s as a shooting guard, but you can if you want to, um, we'll go with, you know, you got Clyde, you got Gervin, you know, over here, right? They in their own little, those are superstars. Now, <clears throat> we got, was it Gus Johnson? Uh, who was a guy on the Knicks who was high all the time? Um, who was it, though? R Ray, Ray, something Ray. Oh, uh, Sugar Ray. Oh, no, not Sugar Ray. I mean, it's sugar. I mean, anytime you say sugar, I'm pretty sure they lighten up right now. <laughs> Michael Ray, Ray Richardson. Richardson. And then you had um, had to go overseas. Hooper. Uh, I, I always want to say Theo Ratliff, but it's uh, Theus. Reggie Theus. No Reggie Theus slander on the show. No, 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 not, no Reggie Theus. Hang time. No, no, no. Hang okay, so those, those, are the top, those are the top four shooting guards. The last three couldn't shoot for shit, right? <laughs> Just all, they couldn't shoot to fucking save their life. Now, now we put them in the 2000s, right? You got Kobe, Dwayne Wade, Allen Iverson. Who the fuck is those? Who are they guarding? And then we come off the bench, we got Ray Allen, T-Mac, and Vince. Talking about here, they should drug test. Someone need to drug test Chris. And what's his name again? Rob Parker. <laughs> Rob Parker. They, they they should be drug tested right now. I'm I'm serious. This is embarrassing. And the last thing I'll leave with, I think they try to say that that you don't know basketball, and I'm looking at a man who dropped 60 points on Kobe Bryant, not mm -hmm. knowing basketball. If you knew basketball, you might have dropped 120 on him, Gil. I swear to God. Listen, 180. This, we, this is how this is how great my basketball knowledge is. Bill and Beer, right? I said he wouldn't play in today's game. I really meant that shit, because <laughs> he wouldn't. Like, I, I don't, I, I, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but. Um, you know he was drafted with Magic, right? He was, he was drafted in the same draft class. You wouldn't know him, because back then, back then they had fucking seven drafts. They had seven rounds. 170 to 250 people were being drafted in the 70s and the 80s. Now, I want you to do math and tell me which league, which time is easier to make the NBA. 90s moving forward, 54 spots. 80s, 170 to 250. It, at the, it, it looks like they were just doing, David Stern was like, hey, you wanna play? Huh? You wanna play? Huh? You wanna play? Huh? You wanna play? Come on, come on, come on. He was just fucking picking anyone who touched the basketball at any point in life was on inside the draft. Like, I, there was a bum where I lived. And he was rambling and said, you know, I got drafted. He was good. like, I got, draft, I got drafted in, 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 uh, in, 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 in the sixth round back in 1985. Get the fuck out of here. No, he was right. He was right. He was just drafting anybody. So, so when I say Bill and Beard wouldn't make today's NBA, listen, he was drafted in the third round. Third round. If he was 10 years older, <laughs> he wouldn't have been in the league, okay? Let's just be, he wouldn't have been in this league, mm -hmm. right? Like, we know what our second round looks like, right? Mm -hmm. 30 players in the second round, 20-some mm, players in the second round, 4 to 10 might play two years and above. The 80s had five more rounds of bullshit. That's crazy. Right? I never knew that. No, they had five more rounds. It's fucking 200 people coming in. I, I, yeah, anybody, as they should. Anybody fucking, can make fucking, it. Fucking, yeah. Anybody, that's what I said, anybody but, can make but, it. But this is supposed to be the toughest era. It should be, like, you should have had one round and it's all super, you had seven rounds of people. And, like, post office, got anyone who, not just anyone who looked like a basketball player. They said, so, look, I want to do this. Um, Bron, I'm sorry, my guy. 
I have to do it. Jordan is back the GOAT. Mm. Yo, not on the last day of Black History Month. I'm sorry, Jordan is black, back the GOAT. I mean, he's come on. The goat. Like, he's back the you Listen, this is why. <laughs> you got to be the GOAT. If you ran the cocaine out of the A's. Like you literally <laughs> ran the cocaine out of these players. Like you was running circles around them that in the 90s they had to clean their shit up. That like, mm. like, like he was mm. a clinic by himself. So I have to give it to Michael Jordan. He's back the goat for what he did for the 80s. He was whooping their ass so bad in the 80s. Look, you remember the uh, last dance? I do remember. When he it. said the teammates, they was all in there doing mm-hmm. some drugs. Yeah. Y'all yeah. remember that, right? Yeah, yeah. I, remember, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I guarantee you if you if you um interview any of those players they don't even they won't they won't even remember playing with MJ that's how hot he was <laughs> they don't even remember the young star he was on that room. Antarctica <laughs> all right Gil I think you you've made your point and rested your case let's keep this thing moving and shaking we leave in the 80s now hot tub time machine finally <laughs> we come back to these 2020s 2023 here you go the real game yeah. <laughs> now we got to talk about probably the worst news it really ruined my black history month I don't know how you guys felt about it but LeBron James Foot injury, said I heard it pop against the Mavs. Proceeded to come back in. I think suffered the injury in the third quarter. Played the fourth. Helped lead the Lakers to their third straight win. Uh, it was just reported yesterday that LeBron is going to be out for an indefinite amount of time with that foot injury. Multiple weeks, potentially. So we're going to do 0 to 100. I'm Gil Massey first, and Brandon, I want you to jump in. What are the chances from 0 to 100 that the Lakers will at least make the play-in game this season? It was one state within 12. They got to get the 10. But it's like, 12, it's, 12 like, spot, it's like, it's like a get the 10. So let me pull the standings I mean, up. It's what, 75, bro? 75, 62. Lakers are half a game out of 10th place. They are, what, two and a half games out of six. Who's in 10th right now? The Pelicans. Pelicans. Yeah, go ahead and get at the Lakers. They can right, get in? Going, yeah, go ahead and get at it. I, I just bumped it back up to 99. 99? Okay. <laughs> I bumped it up. I give the Lakers. How you feeling, Brad? I give the Lakers 50%. 50? 50? 50%. They got AD, though. But no D Lo. D Lo's coming back soon. He's hurt. D Lo's out? Yeah, D Lo's out right now. Yeah, he's hurt. He's hurt right now, so. He's coming back soon, though. They got Vando, I Malik mean, Beasley. Yeah, but I mean, 80, 30%. I, I mean, <laughs> 15 then. 15%. <laughs> It just always hurt, and then Brian not being there is just, I don't know. Well, I mean, you know, is you it even worth it? You could pick up the slack till Brian, let's say he's out two, three weeks and come back for the last 13 games of the season. If they can do it, I mean, you know, if they can get in that play-in game and then get that A spot, I think, you know, they can get Denver or somebody like that out of there. Yeah. Like, like, they could get Denver up out of there. So, I'm going to give you all a stat. AD without LeBron, nine games this season. He's averaging 28-16. Two blocks a game. He seems to have been elevating mm. 60%, 60% true shooting percentage. I don't like to do square analytics, but it, when it supports my arguments, I'll use them. Mm-hmm. They got that squad. D'Lo and AD can't carry until the. I mean, if D'Lo comes back within yeah. the next couple games, I mean, um, yeah. you know. But for the most part, I mean, it's just AD out there, and then the um, the season's over in like a what a month? A month. So. Yeah, you got to get going. Yeah, and I mean, like, like, like you got to get miss going. About now. A half of that, or at least three weeks of that. I mean, yeah. But do you guys feel like this is now AD's chance to prove that he's that guy? He was balling early in the season, got hurt, didn't make the All Star game. I mean, th- listen, if he can, if he can somehow will this team into the playoff game, even though they're half a game out, if he can do it by himself, I- I'm pretty sure we'll give him some some credit, you know, in LA. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, we... So he's he's on our NBA 75 yeah. list, right? So he's one of the 75 best players in NBA history. Ever. If you're on that list... Whoa. Whoa. That was, on a, that was on the curve. <laughs> that was on the curve. That wasn't like literally he's top 75 right now. It's just curve. But, but AD, when he's, when he's playing at his peak, when he's locked in... Listen, he didn't have, this, he didn't have the stats to be top 100. Okay, so it was on the curve of his projection. I understood that part because, I mean, you know, was he better than T-Mac right now? No. Dwight Howard right now? No. He don't have the stats. He's not better than Dwight? No. Right n- Dwight? Dwight Howard. Dwight's stats is better than goddamn Patrick Ewing's stats. Uh-oh. Dwight Howard should have been top 10. It's the 80s, 90s. Wait a minute. 
All right, so let, let's talk about LeBron, man. He, he missed 71 games in his first 15 seasons. 71? Yep. He's missed 98 games in the last five seasons. Mm. Wow. Should the Lakers have been low managing LeBron more this season? Darvin Ham even admitted he was playing LeBron heavy minutes, knowing he was battling injuries. I know how you feel about low management, but is there a certain point, a man's 38 years old, been in the league 20 years, where he should have the benefit of being able to low manage a little bit more? I mean, I think that came from him trying to get the record. You know, I think he was like just trying to stay in shape and try to make sure he get the record. So I think a lot of that is just, and he likes to play. Mm -hmm. I think Bron just likes to play basketball. Like, I don't, I don't think he's thinking about minutes or anything like that. But at 38, I mean, you know, he could probably chill a little bit. <laughs> just, a, just a little bit. But, was, but I mean, let's just be honest. In the last two years, what team has he actually had to actually chill? Mm. Right? You know, I mean, you know, for the most part, everyone's been hurt. You know, you never really had Anthony Davis healthy for the last two years for you to let him ride. You know, you like so LeBron had to literally for the last two years just try to carry this team when it should have mm -hmm. been Anthony Davis carrying it. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, if you're Darvin Ham um, and you thought about load management, what would be your record? Like, what would be your record? Yeah, it might be both. Yeah, yeah, you'd be a bottom. It'd probably be 50. Yeah, you'd be a bottom. Last. Yeah. Last you'd in the West. Battle of Houston. Houston. In the Wimby Sweet States, giving, right. giving that Wimby pick to the Pelicans. <laughs> so last question for you guys. You know, I think Lakers fans was on the front office, felt like they should have made a move in the offseason. They obviously waited right before the trade deadline, but came up with some big big grabs. I'm thinking Rui Hachimura and then, then making the big trade, sending Westbrook to the dra Jazz and getting D'Lo, Vandy, Malik Beasley, and that whole crew. But do you think they made the right decision waiting until so close to the trade deadline versus last summer or earlier in the season? They, they was holding on to them two picks with, for dear life, knowing that potentially this could have been a situation where AD's going to get hurt, LeBron's going to get hurt, and we need to field a competitive team. Too little, too late, or is this squad going to prove us wrong? What squad? The squad they have now. No. D-Lo, AD, Malik Beasley, no, this Austin Reeves. Bro, we, we, we're just trying to – we. We waiting for next year, man. We, <laughs> we, we're pulling the Clippers on yeah. it, man. All right, now, yeah. all right. Yeah, I'm just 2023, 2024. <laughs> yeah, I'm just That's waiting all on. We're doing, man. I'm just waiting on Kyrie to come. Yes. Uh, I'm just waiting on Kyrie to come. Okay. Like, is that, is that like, all? No, yeah, we like, for the summer, baby. Yeah, like we you need. Think after, it seemed like after the, they beat the Mavs, Kyrie might have been second guessing. Like, I like Luca, nah, but. Nah, nah. Uh, I'm trying to get to LA, baby. LA, right here. Okay. This is where it needs to be. All right, well, let's talk about another bucket getter. Your Adidas brethren, Dame Lillard. Now, go after D Dame dropped that freestyle on the airplane. Good things have happened. Yeah, dropped the 71 points. Mm -hmm. Only the eighth 70 pl uh, point game in NBA history. Uh, Oldest player to do it, I believe. Wait, wait, say it again. Eighth 70 point game in NBA. Oh, history. There's eight players that did that. I think a, a bunch I never of Wilts. Knew that. I guarantee you, none of them in the '80s. Oh, Wilts. Only I four players, but eight. Times. I guarantee you, not in the '80s. <laughs> none of them. <laughs> Will, Will Kobe, David Thompson. Um, was David Thompson in the '80s? I don't know. We're we gonna confirm that with our our resident expert here. But well, I want to know, Gil, what are the chances zero to one hundred that a third player scores already seventy points this season? This season? Uh, Rockets got like twenty more games. Nobody's on a rocket is capable of it right no, now. No, I'm saying, but they're. No, I'm but, trying to think of teams. They're going to give up that 70 piece. No, they will, but I don't know if, you know, Dame. Someone just broke in. I'm sorry. So, so um, we are live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> sorry, so. the, uh, the only person who's, who has a team that can possibly do it will be Dame. To do it uh, again? again. Um, I don't know if anybody. I don't think anybody's in a situation where they have just freedom of just shooting like that. Donovan Mitchell. Donovan. Donovan, Donovan, Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, I mean he has seventy. I think he can. But they, but you know when that playoff, when you're in a playoff hunt, you're really crunching your 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 team down. So I don't see anybody really. Probably not this year. I can yeah. see I can see a lot more next year. Yeah. And I can see a hundred point game. I was gonna add that was gonna be my next question. Do you think in our lifetime, someone will break Will's record? Yeah. Somebody drop 101. Yeah, for sure. You think it's possible? Yeah. 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 Is the yeah. defense just that musty or is the offense listen, just that listen. good? Listen, okay. Let's, let's stop. Is the defense that bad? Okay. It's not that the defense is bad. 
is just the offense is way better than it was. You got to remember, from the time the game was invented, right, the principles of defense has never changed. They have never changed, right? How you play defense has never changed. It's never evolved. You know, below the baseline, you push him this way, push him to his weak hand, go under on a non-shooter, go over on a shooter. Like, it, the, the principle has never changed. So what has happened is, since offense has the blueprint, offense has evolved its game around the rules of defense. So our moves back, back what, in the 80s, <laughs> right, you probably had – a 51 to 49 defense compared to offense, right? Right now, you're probably looking at a 80-20 wow. from offense to defense. I got to remember, we keep creating moves. We mm. keep evolving the offense. The defense has no chance. You got to remember, every rule that they add is to help the defense now. You get them off the ground, right, yeah. and you try to – they don't want to call that. A defensive player stick his arm out there because we're learning off of the habits. Mm -hmm. So it's not that the defense is worse. It's the offense is just that much better now. So, I'm But gonna, you had to play basketball to really understand that, Chris, in all you 80s players. What's the other guy's name? In the, what's the other guy's name? <laughs> Rob Parker. Rob Parker. <laughs> right? You, Rob Parker. Like Ms. Parker, Rob, Ms. Parker on Friday, Rob Parker. That sounds like a movie producer. Shit. Uh, He's an analyst? Fox Sports. Good man. Him and Chris are good dudes. I know they're good dudes, but, you know, sometimes you just got to educate the good dudes so they, they, you, yeah. they, they get it from another lens. So <laughs> This is know, Dill's Arena. So, you know, I'm, I'm your humble servant, so you do, we do what you want to do or yourself. Just so they understand yeah. that, yeah. you know, it's not that the defense has gotten softer. It's just offense has gotten better. Like, I can tell you this right now, and I'm going to look in the camera. If you grab today's players and you give them the same space Michael Jordan had on isolations, barbecue shrimp time. Okay, I'm not sorry. even chicken shrimp. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Like you got to be. You think about our moves mm -hmm. today. Give us. You got to. You got to remember back then. What about the hand checking on the physicality? You're not worried about that. No matter. Still. You still gotta remember. Got, still got all this. Like we're, I, I'm, I'm, we're not the. We're not the guards that's sitting there posting up full court, like back to the basket. <laughs> yeah. You know this. Yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're coming downhill. Hand checking does not matter. I'm coming full speed. You're not strong enough to stop 210, 220 coming full speed. Okay. So what ends up happening is if I have any guard on the ISO and you have to lift up with your guy, well, you're not stopping me. Yeah. The only thing you can do is close line me if you can get there fast enough. You know what I mean? So it's like, like yeah, Jordan, Jordan had a rougher game, but he had all the space in the world to work. Yeah, we can't hand check, but we still have a game where you can zone us, you can come over and fake double, you can come over and sit on the other side of the block. So we all have our different type of, you know, you know, um, rules. So don't knock our rules, you know, don't knock our rules and say that was a better game, but it, it, it wasn't. Like even today, someone asked me, hey, can you stop the players, you know, today? Stop them? Fuck no. I didn't have to guard someone trying to do the same thing as me. I'm not guarding someone mm -hmm. trying to score 30 every night, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. Calderon, I'm yeah. Jason Kidd. Them, yeah. Listen, if you bust my ass, you scored 24, right? You was averaging like eight and you scored 24. That was a hell of a night for you, right? <laughs> Today, you walk into when a motherfucker try to score 70. Yeah. Like, no, I cannot guard you. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, listen, I'm not hot, okay? I'm right. not going to pretend that I can stop the next generation of players. This is like, this is like Bob Cousy, right? It's like Bob Cousy. It is, hey, last day of Black History look, Month, look, forget look, the Bob Cousy slander off. It's like Bob Cousy, like, coming out publicly and was saying that I can stop Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson don't have shit on me. What do you think Magic Johnson's going to say? <laughs> what do you think Magic's going to say? Man, <laughs> That's man, what we're man. doing to them. Like, it's, what is wrong man, with y'all now, man? man stay, in your, stay in your era. Stay in your lane. So stay I'm, I'm going to read you guys a tweet. Just want to get your opinions really quick. This comes from the legend Miles Brown. He said, anyone passes 81, and I'm giving it a double asterisk. 
Kobe was in a real game and really needed, these BBL buckets are not the same. <laughs> BBL buckets. Um, he was in a real game. Oh, because the rest, all these other games is fake as fuck. Like, I, I don't, I, well, what is the, I don't know. Right? I don't get the tweet. But. That, like, that, yeah. Robinson's matter because though he was chasing scores when he dropped his 70. No, 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 no. Okay, he was, he was, he was chasing For his own scoring. individual What I'm saying, glory. he was chasing a scoring record, right? So that one should have an asterisk, to be honest, because Shaq set out because he thought he won that shit, and the Spurs decided we're going to feed you the ball the whole game so you can get the record. Was that on the Clippers, I think? Yeah, I think so. But what I'm saying is they purposely fed him the ball so he can get that record. Okay. Um, so that's, that, that's not a real game situation anyway. Um, so last thing on Dame. Is 100 a real game? I mean, 100 pointers? I mean, Will got like four or five of those. Who was, who was that 100-point game? Five, five. Five, six mailmen. <laughs> you know, so we can look, we can sit here and depict everybody's era. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so let's, last thing on Dame, and uh, you know, we talked about Dame not running from the grind, being loyal to the Blazers. He had this to say: They'll never give me credit for what I've actually done. They better hope I don't win a championship with the Blazers. So, what are the chances, zero to one hundred, that Dame can win a chip with the Blazers? Zero. I'm saying zero. Oof. And it's not Dave's fault. That's my. No, it's not. It's just nobody's coming to Portland. Um, and I, I don't know. It's just it's just ran its course. Like I think it's just it's just it's just running its course now. Why do you feel like people aren't aren't rocking with Portland like that? Because for me, when you look at Portland, no sales tax. Because it's just reasonable strip club. Marketing. Food is great. Number one in food. Most strip clubs in the country per capita. Two dollars. They got pock pot. They got all types of good food. No, it, it, Beautiful wineries like the Chosen Family. Listen, it's still it's still like. Even though we're in a social media era, it's still a dinosaur thinking where you're talking about marketing dollars, right? So LA, New York, Miami, Chicago, Boston, DC, top six, they have an advantage over everyone because they have a market where you can sell shoes, you know, we can do all this, you know, I mean, because, you know, just like anything, your money doubles when you're in big markets. So, Everyone always thinks about the uh, bigger market teams. Um, you know, it's like it, it's one. It's just one of those things where until you know, until players see dollars being made in other cities, just like someone in in, in Los Angeles. It, until that happens, you know, players are gonna always keep trying to come to the big cities. For sure, I think he should leave. Who? Dang. You still feel it? I, I, I mean, I, look, I, I think I, it's time for him to leave. I mean, lo, lo, I mean, I'm not being loyal to no no NBA team. I mean, not, unless they go give me some a percentage of the team or something later on. Can't, but that's illegal. Uh, I tried. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> but or something, or something. But I just feel like the loyalty thing is like it's like all right. You like, can't. Well, you can't get percentage while you're an active player. Well, if I'm gonna stay here, then you know. No, I'm, but you know, listen. It's it's always. It's always better to know the owner of the team mm -hmm. than the general manager. You know what I mean? Um, owners are businessmen, right? Yeah. And just like anything, just like a, a, a student going up to a Hall of Famer and, and really asking questions about getting his game better, asking an owner about business and really being, you know, into it, mm -hmm. oh, they're going to give you the blueprint to be successful after basketball. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's the, the case with Dame, with his, uh, with the owner owner groups over there. So it's hard to really say what's going on. But yeah. you know, he's he's really loyal to them. Even if he wins, even if he wins a chip, it's going to be like Toronto's chip. No one really remembers. Mm. No one, re no one remembers. We're not going to remember for Dame though, and leading that Blazer squad to the mountaintop. We'll try, but like it's going to be hard. What year did uh, Toronto win? Twenty nineteen. How do you know that? Because I'm there, Gil, oh. and I'm a Warriors hater. No, I, I remember I told somebody, I said, name the, four, the last four championships, right? It was like, Golden State, Golden State, uh, Cleveland, uh, Cleveland? And I was like, I see. I was in the building for one of their losses. It, it was a beautiful thing to see. Kawhi was in his bag. He was. Yeah. Are you Canadian? No. Because only a Canadian remember. I listened to Drake, the though. Exact year without thinking. Drake and light-skinned. <laughs>
No, it was at one of those finals games. Twitter, oh, okay. Twitter brought us up there. We got to see the Warriors get smacked. I remember I was sitting, they had us in a suite, but we were right next to Steve Nash, and they had all these T-shirts, and I wanted to grab a bunch of them just to help them remember this loss. Damn. The, the suite was locked. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. It's time for another segment. We got trust issues. So let's talk about, Gil, your favorite city, Milwaukee Bucks. Hmm. That is my favorite city now. You see? We done converted. Bucks we got Brandon. converted. Bucks yeah, six. Yeah, All right, yeah. welcome. Bucks welcome. Legend. <laughs> welcome. 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 <laughs> welcome. See? Welcome. The corner of the Bucks is six terms. So, mm -hmm. Bucks have won 14 straight games. I don't think it's getting talked about enough. It's almost like they keep winning, we just forget about it. Mm -hmm. But they have now jumped the Celtics to first in the East as of this taping. Do you trust the Bucks to win the East? Um, do I trust? I mean, I do because they've been there, they've done it. Um, they have the experience. Um, they have arguably, you know, right now, the top two, maybe the top two best player in the league right now um, that's willed the team to the playoffs, to the championship, and literally, and literally just had uh, a four-quarter performance at the free throw line. That, you know, for him, that's just, that was the most impressive thing, that he hit free throws in that game, what was he, 20 for 20, mm -hmm. something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, like, just yeah. unbelievable. So, you know, they have the experience, so I, I, I do believe that they can get to the finals. Okay, you rolling with uh, that? Of course, you already know. And Giannis is the best player in the league right now. Um, He's better than Joker. Whoa. Yeah. KD. Huh? KD. KD not playing. KD's Don't not matter. playing right now. It doesn't matter. He's, but, but KD's not playing He's right on the right. roster. Yeah, but. I did that shit to KD once, <clears throat> right? I, I, I named him two. Right? I said, you're two right now. He's like, why am I two? I said, because you're not playing. He said, well, I'm on a roster. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, you're not playing right now. So I'm on the yeah. roster. As long as the Bucks stay healthy, though. Mm -hmm. As long as the Bucks stay healthy, um, I, yeah, I think that's just the biggest thing, staying healthy, Middleton. And I want to see Joe Ingles. Uh, Joe was, Ingles? Yeah, Ingles. Ingles, yeah come into himself a little bit more, like, down the stretch for him, because I think he's going to be a big piece. Especially in the playoffs. You know, especially in the yeah, playoffs. So we, we, big news out of Milwaukee. We saw that uh, Mark Lazary, who's one of ownership group, sold his share of the Bucks to the Haslam family. They own the, the Cleveland Browns, I think the Columbus crew on Ohio. But the Bucks had a total valuation of $3.5 billion, the third highest American sports team behind uh, the Broncos and then the Suns, which recently just sold to Matt Ishbia. Man, you're a Milwaukee guy. When you hear that, is that wild to you to think that, that this small market team is now the third highest selling or value based on valuation franchise in the well, history of sports? Well, I mean, well, they did a lot of upgrades. So, you know, they did a lot of upgrades in the, uh, the Deer District, the, um, you know, the new arena and things like that. So Mark came in and he did his thing. Um, but it's just hard with a small market, you know, for him to sell his stake and things like It's just hard because it's like, yo, they won it before, right? So it's like, you know, the city... You know, the city is trying to come on the up and up, but it's still a small, it's mm -hmm. still a small market. So it's kind of like, you know, even when they do win it again, if they do win it again, it's still kind of like, all right, well, now what? Like, it's not, it doesn't, like you said, like L.A., New York, mm -hmm. you, they all have this, it's, it's just like another, it's like always something else yep. that's, that can get it going. And it's just like, I don't know, Milwaukee is always going to be like just in the middle to me. For sure. I mean, I, I, I hadn't been to Milwaukee until my dad got his jersey retired, I think, 2019. That was my first time out there. And I was like, I, I actually fuck with I mean, everything you no, hear about Milwaukee yeah, yeah. versus getting there. I haven't been there in the summertime yet. I know they do that big concert series. It's supposed yeah, oh. to be, like, super turned up. Yeah, Summerfest. Okay, first of all. <coughs> Summerfest. Yeah. First of all. No, Milwaukee's listen, fire. Milwaukee. Listen, I'm just, uh, you know, I mean, this is no disrespect, um, but white people making that kind of money in black history must be illegal. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that should just be illegal in February alone. Like, you got to do it January I, like, 31st or March yeah, 1st. Yeah, like, come on, man. I got to hit $3.5 billion just being like, come on. Come on. You know what's wild, I need some though. more money in my life. And we got to talk about this. On the last day of Black History Month, when you look at these crazy team valuations, it all traces back to former Clippers on O'Donnell Sterling Facts. being mad at his side boo for taking pictures with Magic Johnson and Matt Kemp because he's forced to sell the team. Balmer comes in, pays $2 billion for it, and everybody yeah. says, well, fuck, if the Clippers are worth $2 billion, what are the Lakers worth? What are the Cowboys worth? What are the Broncos no, worth? I mean, you, you're worth, to be honest, your worth was what, what someone's willing to buy and yeah. pay for it. So, um, so Lazary and that team, uh, that group, bought, bought the Bucks in 2014 for $550 million. Now, he, I think he owns a third of the team. He's going to walk away with close to like $1.2 billion. 
What is the, what is the Clippers worth now? Uh, they have I, to be at the four. Not sure the latest latest value. Okay. They, they sold for two billion. You know, they're definitely not worth anywhere near. Uh, okay. The Clippers valuation is like three point nine billion right now. Yeah, okay. It's great. We got these little earpieces. Y'all be thinking I know all this shit. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got the legend Baron in here giving me all these great notes and nuggets. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. This is how we make TV. No, no, no. I know my shit. I know. You don't wait. wait. I got I got one, but you, I know my shit. But I they feed talking, you the same I, shit. No, but he's talking to you. That's why I ain't yelling this shit out. <laughs> So last thing I want to tell you about the Bucks, and we're going to talk about, Giannis was on the Daily Show. It was, it was a segment with Sam Minaj. He was reading some jokes, kind of kind of clapped at uh, KD and Joker, could barely keep a straight face, though. Mm-hmm. But if you're those guys, and even though he's doing it in jest, he's, he's Greco-Nigerian, he's, you know what I mean? He's just happy to be in America, getting a bag, winning championships. Do you take any offense to those jokes? No, I, you know I mean? With, 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 with Giannis, you, you see his personality. Um, even when he's he's reading it, mm-hmm. like after he he trying to put his own little spit, like oh I really like his game, like you know you can see he's like just very good hearted dude. So um, he respects the game. He he knows you know what it takes to be great. So you know as a player, I'm not gonna be offended by what he said. I'm gonna be offended by just the notion um, of what was said. You know just the notion, just the thought of I got to keep jumping. To win championships, but I, KD don't KD don't give a fuck. Brandon, you KD, <laughs> and KD he tells you, care, bro. I can teach. If I'm I can KD, teach you how to carry your own team. If I'm KD, I care. I care just off the like, and and KD's a little more sensitive on on on, on social yeah. media. So, and and these are two guys that can meet in the finals. Mm-hmm. Like, like this can really meet in the finals. And like you said, the outside is going to blow it up yeah. so much. Like the outside is going to be like, oh, you see what he said, this and that. So. It's in the back of your mind, though. No? Like, don't like you know what I'm saying. Like, I'm not like you know we're still competitors. So you say one little thing, I'm gonna still feel away at some point. No, no, no. no. You're gonna you're gonna feel it, but I mean, he's not gonna take it like. No, no, no. Like, I'm not, not gonna be mad at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the the well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to drop four. Yeah, keep up with me. I'm gonna drop. It's just something like if the if the Suns end up winning it, KD went. Oh, like, yeah, like, yeah, he's gonna his like, like you know what I'm saying. Like the troll game is gonna be off. This troll game will be a thousand. You never really want to give him to material to troll you, right? Just give you him don't an easy wanna, one. You don't want to give a star player ammunition to focus on you. I mm-hmm. did that shit with Dwayne Wade once, and it, trust me, it's not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> someone asked me about the Miami Heat, right? So someone asked me, oh, you know, you got the Miami Heat. I said, what do I care? I said, Dwayne Wade can't shoot. We're just going to do what the Olympics did to him. Just sit in the zone. He heard that shit, right? <laughs> he heard it, and I heard it. He, so <laughs> while I said it, I'm watching the games. Like, okay, we gonna play them in like two weeks? And then you just like, you look at that, okay, 38. <laughs> Getting ready 38, for you. 35, Jesus Christ. Damn it. Like, and then, and then so I, when he came to town, I called. Hey, man, listen, hey, how you doing, Dwayne? This is Gilbert. Uh, <laughs> You know, the, the, the thing in the paper about two weeks ago, that wasn't even, it was misconstrued. You know, we used to go say that shit quick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was misconstrued. He's like, oh, yeah, that's cool, <laughs> right? Oop. You know how you're watching the player warm up? It was the flat. He was looking like, yeah. He had, he had, a, he had 30 to 40 that game. But the way he, he didn't even look to take a jump shot. Spins, spins, spins. Oh, he had me in a spin cycle so goddamn fast. Like I'm looking at Larry, like, hey man, do your job, <laughs> bro. Do your job, man. I got, I got a, uh, I got Gary Payton, bro. <laughs> I got Gary. I got old GP right here, man. That's funny. Oh, he, oh man. Every, I, I, I don't even think we beat them. That whole season. I think I'm two. I think we, all the, uh, the Heat games, what, two and thirteen? Is he the two and thirteen or zero oh and nine? Damn. Yeah, it was. I, I don't think I beat them until I got to uh, Orlando. Oh, he puts he put an ass whooping on me. From from <laughs> then and from then on, baby. Oh, it was ass. Oh, it was. Hey, listen, it was ass whooping. That was the last person I've ever said shit to when it came to the game time. Mm. You ever had an experience like that? To game time, I think I think I had a moment with like Nate Robinson. We had got into it because I had I had uh, I was talking. I think I had got him in Chicago. And then he was like, and then he was trying to get me back in um, in Milwaukee, and we and I was talking, was talking like clowning. I was clowning on the court, yeah. like dancing, <laughs> like clowning, like doing all this stuff back then. Like, yeah, you weak, like having yeah, my nuts yeah, to the yeah. ground. <laughs> then next thing you know, in Milwaukee, he uh, 
Yeah, he was he was getting ready. And I remember Monte coming in the locker room. He was like, yo, you know, he getting out there ready for you tonight. And you know me, I'm just like, man, whatever. Yeah. Nate Robinson, he coming off the bench behind Kirk, Kirk uh Kirk Heinrich? Yeah, yeah, Kirk Heinrich. I'm like, man, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. got at me though. Got at <laughs> and I got kicked out that game. Uh, and I got kicked out. I was yeah. We can see the end of it. <laughs> so now it's time for mostly fans, you know. We don't have only fans. We got mostly, mostly. fans. We got some mm-hmm. lovers, some haters. But uh, NBA's been talking about getting rid of this one and done rule. It's pretty interesting now, especially with the landscape of college and NIL, where you can literally get a bag on the level of a, of a rookie contract. So, Gil, if the one and done rule ends, what would you do if you were the best 18 year old hooper in the country? You going straight to the league, getting that bread, or if I gave you an NIL deal, say, come to Arizona and we'll pay you more than you can make off that rookie contract? What you saying? I mean, I want to be in the NBA, so um, I'm going to jump to the NBA because I want to start my, I want to start my money clock, and I want to start because you got to remember, usually it takes about three years to adjust. So by the time I get to, if I'm 18, by the time I get to 21, I should be playing like an all-star type of player. So I'd rather just go to the, the NBA instead of going to college. Brandon, what you doing? 18, and I. Yeah, I'm going straight from uh, high school to the uh, NBA. For sure. Um, and but but like your point, like I'm not thinking three years. I'm just going. Like yeah, I'm just yeah. like like my whole thing. I, I'm not like trying to develop. I'm just going. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just going just to just cause I think I'm ready. That's an Oak Hill averaging 35. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Yeah, I'm For out. Sure. But yeah. here, this is the one thing like about NIL deals that I don't like. These parents are pimping their kids out. Oh, wow. For checks. Because you got to remember, think about 17, 18, 16. You don't have your own bank account, right? right? right. You don't have a financial advisor. So any company that's coming to you is dealing with your parents. Right? They can have advisors now, though. Yeah, but you, you listen to your parent, right? So any deal that's coming your way, your parent is, has talked about this with whoever. So it's never in your best interest. You know, it might not be in your bed, like the overtime league or whatever. Like, the kids are not making the decision. It's the parents. Like, you know, you're throwing two, 300000 at a kid. Of course that parent is going to be like, no, go to that league because this is bills. Mm. I can pay off debt. I can pay off student loans with this. That kid ain't really seeing that money. So, But how is that any different going to overtime league versus, hey, come to Arizona. We'll give you that three hundred. You can live in Tucson. You, you one don't, of the seventh wonders of the world. When I get to, when I get to Arizona, you don't know me. <laughs> my parents don't know me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, my parents don't have access to that. You know, I can I can open up a little bank account myself. Mm. You know, that's why I said the high this high school part is horrible because these kids are being they're going to be pushed each and every way. These deals, like I see parents already, like already money. It's all about it's all about money and trying to but, figure out what bag I can get for my son so I can get a piece of that. Hasn't that been going on though since the beginning of time? I think even back in the yeah. day, parents was always leveling up, getting good shoe deals. Guy might be on K Swiss team one day, next next thing yeah. you know, yeah. but DTI come in, take but, them to the night. That's what I'm facility. saying. But you've seen yeah. it back then. Now you see it where it's legal. So you just see these kids just flying from team to team, but just yeah. being put in bad situations. Like some of these deals, like for all you athletes that's trying to move to the NBA and you're thinking about brands. Think about your brand yourself, right? You are your company. So every deal you sign is attached to you. So Mm. if you are a big name, make sure you're signing deals and you're linking up with companies that match your name. No matter what kind of money someone's going, if it's it's Juan Carlos taco stand, and they're giving you a hundred thousand, no, right? You 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 don't you don't go out. You don't want that part of your resume because when big companies look at who's dealing with you, they're gonna be like, well, who is this? Yeah. I don't want to be tied to a player who's gonna, you know. That's why when you look at, you know, I'm dealing with Hublot, I'm dealing with uh, Oakley glasses, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I'm dealing with, mm-hmm. you know, Ferrari. You, you know, high class wants to be around high class, so you really have to be careful with NIL deals on who you actually sign your brand to. Yeah, I think the most important thing, and I've found new brand deals on the scale of you gentlemen, but you gotta rock with shit that you actually use. Like Underdog Fantasy, for example. Mm-hmm. I've been using that app, hitting it, <laughs> kick them. Yeah. You know, they've been playing me. I don't blame Underdog, I blame coaches. <laughs> I blame officiating. <laughs> Kevin Herter, I needed him to get 12.5, he had 11. 
He went to double overtime. That was Mike Brown's fault. <laughs> you would have won by more, Mike, if you put Kevin and let him get a three. Oh, Tatum, Tatum messed me up, too. I had him one and a half blocks and steals. He had the steal in the first quarter. Didn't get you that couldn't up. get a steal or block. The other three, come on, man. God damn, being 6'8". Hey, people just hating out there. It, yeah. you know, offense don't want to give that, them. Yeah, that's interesting what you said, though, about the parents, mm -hmm. like how they are now, like with it. Because I remember me doing my deal, 18, trying to sign with Under Armour. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I remember my mom being in there, Sonny Vaccaro, all this. And I just remember, like, the agent, and they were all fighting because my mom was trying. And it just happened to Luca, too. I remember his mom was getting a percentage of everything on his name. And that's what my mom was trying to do at 18, mm -hmm. like, just because I didn't know. Yeah. So, you know, they were How did you get feel about it? That's your mom, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, oh, Sonny Vaccaro was like, fuck no. Like Sonny Vaccaro said, hell no. He's like, this is this is his like this is his thing. Like you're not gonna get a percentage off everything that he makes. Then my mom would still be getting paid now. Okay. Like you know what I'm saying? Think about that. Like if you get a if she would have signed and got a percentage of everything, that means anything I do. But I guess for, for as a kid, 18 years old, because I'm thinking like if my parents would have came in and wanted some bread as 18, I would have been like, yeah. Yeah, for and that, and that's and that's the <coughs> bad, that's the bad problem with it. Like you don't want to say no to your parents you know, who yeah. raised you and they're going to put that guilt trip on you. But at the end of the day, like, I don't want to be obligated. I'm your son. Yeah. So if you're telling me everything you did for me is for me to pay you back, you I know what I mean? Yeah, I dealt with that a lot. I dealt with that a lot. This is early. Like, like early. This is like early. Because you're 18, but you, they know you got a bag. Yeah, my pops yeah and, I'm, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, th I'm signing 1.2. I'm just thinking, all right, like, let's go to Italy. But remember, I'm still trying to get to the league. league so I'm man. just like, this little money is like, here, man, you know, buy my mom a crib, boom, boom, that should be enough. But, you know, it was, it was more just like everybody. And then we hit the recession, too, at that time. Mm -hmm. Remember, Obama had just gotten to office. It was some rough times back then. It was just, I wasn't ready, like, all that. I'm glad I went to, like, overseas because mm -hmm. I was away from everything. Did, yeah. did, did that keep, I mean, because I got to imagine if you was out here, you was at Arizona, the amount of people that would be hitting you up. All the time for money. For now, money Arizona would have been easier because he would have detached for a year. Being just like you did it. Yeah, just mm -hmm. like you did in Italy. You, you're detaching. But you're signing, Italy, I mean, you're signing your deal because you're, you're becoming a pro. Yes. Yeah, see, so. You got a taste of it before you got, you got to there. It. Yeah, so I saw everything. See, that's what I said. So if you really want to know who your friend is right here, the high school kids and all that, these NIL deals will test your friendship and test what your parents is about. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, in, in the black culture, we're taught to get rich to give it back to our parents, right? Instead of get rich raise your son for your son to be in a better position for him to get rich for him to put his you know what i mean yeah. that's how to move it forward instead, instead of, of instead of getting money and then going back taking care of it how are you supposed to build if you're taking care of everything behind you um and you know that's that's the, the and it's thing easy that we to gotta get out and it's easy to target the black kid that has just a single parent mother mm -hmm. that's the easy one to get too yeah. Cause now they both don't know. And yep. She don't know. Yep. So she just like, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, so I want to ask you, how instrumental was Sonny Vaccaro? We hear that name. He's a legend in the yeah. game. You know, I think got the new Michael Jordan movie about yeah. to come out. He be, he's been doing work for for a long, long time. How y'all end up connecting initially? And, and at what point did you realize, all right, this is somebody I could really trust to be in my corner? Well, I was I was I had just graduated from Oak Hill, coming home. I was waiting on my SAT score, and they had flagged it. And I was in the car with my mom. I was listening to Michael Thompson. Uh, Clay, Clay uh, Thompson's dad, and he was on a uh, radio show talking to Sonny Vaccaro, and Sonny was just like, you know, I don't know why these kids just don't sit out for a year, make the NCAA, you know, uh, like, like, uh, you know, pull their cards and, and, you know, maybe sit out, go to the G League or, you know, go overseas, and then that's just when it just clicked in my head, and I called Sonny, and Sonny was like, yeah, young fella, um, I can get you some workouts, went to Vegas, boom, 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 did it in two weeks. The next thing you know, uh, I'm off to Baltimore meeting with Under Armour, signed an Under Armour deal. Next thing you know, a month later, I'm in, I'm in Rome. I mean, two weeks later, I'm in Rome signing my deal with Sonny. And Sonny was just like, yo, young fella, I just need you to stay here for the whole year. Once you do this, basketball is going to change. And then, that's, and then the rest was history. Next thing you know, I come back, I get picked 10th. That's wild. And I didn't even play all year. Yeah. yeah that's so it was just... Yeah, it was a blessing because I didn't know what where I was gonna go. I mean, Luke Olson had just retired. Mm -hmm. He left. Gerald Baylor said he was gone. 
So it was like the plan was there, but it just every, something was just telling me to do something else. Yeah, it's like I, I like I even with my kids, I tell them, I say, listen, um, when you're listening to people talk, listen, right? Um, when people start talking about money, I said you don't want to do deals with people or listen to people who don't have money about money deals mm. because they have an interest in it, right? You want to listen to people who have no interest in you know, the money side of it. Like, I don't want no percentage. So that means I done vetted the deal to make sure it benefits you and you only. You know what I mean? So, you know, I got, I mean, my son is, there's NI, NIL deals coming. So You got bags coming already? I mean, I imagine. We're, we're, we're working on it. We still got to <laughs> jump through a whole lot of hoops of shit. But uh, we're going to get them over <laughs> to UCLA. We got a whole lot of shit we got to weed yeah. the fuck out, you know. We're going to get them over to <laughs> UCLA. You know? We're gonna take care of them. You know, but, you know, it's like, you know, you know, he listens to me because he knows I don't want anything or need anything. So if I'm telling him this is a good, this is a good situation, he knows that it's for his best interest. Yeah. It has yeah. nothing to do with yeah. me. So, yeah. you know, and, and parents, that's really what you should be worried about. Yeah. The, the money will come. Like, yeah. I, I mean, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, <laughs> you'll be fine. Just yeah. stop. The, you're thinking small when you should be thinking big. You should be trying to put him in a position where he can make four, five hundred million. Yeah. Instead of looking at this two hundred thousand, you're trying to figure out how you gonna get this yeah. and I'm gonna get a new truck shit like that. Like ah. Yeah. No. So, yeah. We'll see. That's our show for today. Another Tuesday. Last that was a horrible week. ending. What do you mean, Gil? That was a good button. You got somebody you got somebody on your test you wanna get at? <laughs> What's his name again? <laughs> <laughs> Roker? Was J J Joe Roker? Rob Parker. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Now you can finish. Just wanted to make sure. Rob Parker. They're going to watch the show, Gil. We gave them material for their show. We gave them some more from this one. but uh, They should. Oh, ooh. Like and subscribe. Oh, no, no. <clears throat> I, did, I did. Like and subscribe. I did this for, because I know they probably don't look at all decade teams, you know, the all decade that you guys did, the NBA did. Um, so, you know, point guard, shooting guard, small forward, and power forward. I'm removing the centers because the centers is not here today since basically early 2000s. Um, so there's 40 spots. Right, that you guys picked. You probably, Chris, you probably picked. Um, of the top 10 greatest in each position, let's just say um, 80s have six, 2000s, 13. Six verse 13. If you want to add Barkley, Jordan, and um, Hakeem, then the 80s has Nine, but then the 90s has three. However you want to do it, Oof. the 2000s mm -hmm. have 13 players that you guys voted in top 10. Yeah. Do your research. That's some facts for that ass. Woo. Mm -hmm. We appreciate y'all. This has been another episode of Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoop, whoop. Hey, they need to be drug tested. You know what I mean? They just can't be going on shit like that and just, just splurting out shit, talking about, yeah, we going to do that. Come on, man. I think. Pee in a cup. <laughs> March 1st. You get the rest of Black History Month to figure it out, but not, not in one of our Gills Arena's cups. And this is, uh, this is lemonade. <laughs> We'll see y'all tomorrow. We'll be here all week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> like and subscribe to all that good stuff. It's Gills Arena. <laughs> What's so funny is, you know, that, yo, that shit gonna go, yo, in the beginning, yo, you was getting your shit off in the beginning. <laughs> I had to let you just go. I'm like, yo, you getting your shit off right now. I said, get it off. <laughs>